Hello there and welcome. I'm Bob Proctor and it's a real pleasure for me to be sharing this video series with you. What I'm going to be doing here in this series is sharing some insights that I have gained from studying the laws for the last 40 years. I've actually been studying a little longer than that, but specifically digging into the laws for approximately 40 years. And this series on the law comes from work of Raymond Hollywell, just an incredible human being. And he begins this work by asking a question. He said, the question uppermost in the world of thought today is whether a person has the capacity, equipment, and power to control their life. Whether we can be what we want to be and, or whether we're just a drop in the ocean of life, millions are affected by unemployment, poverty, and want, and we know that, do we have any control over our life? You know, he goes on to point out that a fatalistic belief is contagious. And when a person submits to its influence, believing that circumstances around him are stronger than the power within him, that person is defeated before the race is even run. See, in the history of the race, in the biography of man, there's a long list of evidence of man overcoming circumstances and meeting his problems in life. Now, I've experienced this myself, and I'm certain you have. Do you know, I go back to 1961, when I first began to study any of this information, I had no formal education, I had no business experience, and, and I just wasn't doing very well. I was earning $4,000 a year, I owed six. I seemed to have problems all around me, and I was completely controlled by what was going on in my life. It never entered my mind that I could actually change everything that was going on in my life. And I was fortunate enough to meet a man that saw something in me that I wasn't capable of seeing in myself. And he got me studying Napoleon Hill's work from Think and Grow Rich, which led me into Andrew Carnegie's material and, and then a host of other authors. But you see, I was 26 before I ever read a book of any kind. Now, I could read, not well, but I could. I have since found out that I read about as well as most people. I think the average person reads at approximately a grade seven level. And that's because we learn to read by the time we're in grade seven and never improve upon that skill from that point on. Today I have a magnificent library of books I've read and I have a desk, a little table sitting right in the center of it and my mind is surrounded by just phenomenal information. But that wasn't the way it was when I was first introduced to this material. I was totally convinced that I was the victim of circumstance. You know, George Bernard Shaw spoke on that. He said, people are always blaming circumstance for what they are. He said, I don't believe in circumstance. The people that get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstance they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. Well, you see, that's pretty well what this series really points out. Let me touch on a, another highlight that really caught my attention. The author said, if all conditions are the result of actions, and all actions are the outcome or the fruit of our ideas, then our ideas must determine the conditions in our daily lives. An idea is a thought or a group of thoughts, and an idea is an image or a picture in the mind. There must have been an idea, a mental picture, back of every well-known achievement or invention. Now think of that for a moment. How about the medium that we're communicating through right now? Here I am standing in a studio, you know, talking to a camera. And now there you are at home, probably watching this on your computer. That little box, that little thing that maybe you stick in a briefcase, that has more power than the computer that carried the first man to the moon. Where did these ideas come from? How did, they, how did they happen? Do you know where they came from? They came from the mind of man. Dr. J.B. Ryan said the mind is the greatest power in all of creation. Now, I have quoted Dr. Werner von Braun on The Secret, and I've quoted him in any number of films that I've done. 
And he said the natural laws of this universe are so precise that we don't have any difficulty building spaceships, sending people to the moon, and we can time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. You see, to my way of thinking, after studying this for a relatively short period of time, it only makes real good sense for you and I to start to understand these laws and then attempt to bring our life into harmony with them. And I'll tell you this, after years and years of study, the better job you do at that, at bringing your life into harmony with the law, the more you're going to enjoy life. You can enjoy abundance. You can enjoy great health, meaningful relationships. You can have virtually anything you want if you work in harmony with the law. But you violate it, and your life is not going to be a very happy one. You will not enjoy good health. Poverty will visit upon you. I like the way my good friend Mark Victor Hansen puts it. He says, money comes where it's invited and stays where it's welcome. And you see, that's people that are living in harmony with the law. Let me share something out of Raymond Hollywell's great work. It's a highlight that I really enjoy.